بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ون ٹوڈے ٹاک اباؤٹ دا جینس ٹوڈیز لیکچر آؤٹ لائن آر ان دس لیکچر وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دا جینس کیٹیگری دا کیریکٹرسٹکس آف دا جینس جنرک کیریکٹرسٹکس اینڈ دین وٹ از دا میننگ آف جینس اینڈ آ فیو ایگزامپلس So our lecture outcomes, uh, after watching and listening to this lecture, student will know about uh, genus category, that what is uh, uh, the status of genus category, what is the place or position of genus category inside the hierarchy classification, uh, the meaning of genus and the generic characteristics, what are the uh, different generic characteristics. So, uh, Genus uh, is actually the lowest obligatory higher category. Now, uh, the lowest uh, category and lower categories is species or subspecies. But in higher categories, now categories below species level are known as lower categories. And categories above, uh, I mean genus and above genus are known as higher categories. So, in, in higher categories, The lowest category is or the lowest obligatory category is genus. Now, um, uh, in hierarchy classification, uh, genus is at the bottom and domain is at the top. And in between these two, there are many other categories. So, we will talk about them one by one. But uh, in this lecture, we will talk about only about the genus category. Now, Uh, if you uh, recall uh, the, the very previous lecture uh, in which we uh, talked about uh, micro taxonomy and macro taxonomy. So now, now we are going into macro taxonomy. About genus is macro taxonomy. Okay, so it's the lowest of uh, higher categories and the, and the lowest of the all, uh, higher categories are based on comparative data. We compare the data regarding different species on uh, and on base basis of based upon or on the basis of those those comparative data that comparative data we classify animals into different categories. We start from uh, species, genus, and family, and so on and so on. So, in other words, genus is the obligatory taxonomic category. directly above the species in Linnaean hierarchy. So, in the previous lecture, we discussed about the text uh, uh, regarding the Linnaean hierarchy, that what is Linnaean hierarchy. Uh, so, in that Linnaean hierarchy, uh, genus lies second from the bottom. So, like uh, species and then genus. Uh, genus uh, is a monophyletic uh, unit and this is very important characteristic uh, you should keep in mind that uh, genus is a monophyletic unit which means that all animals in a genus belong to common ancestor. They are from mono means single and phyletic mean phylogeny. So, mean all the animals or all the organism inside a genus Uh, uh, it doesn't matter thousands or hundreds or a few two three four five or many they all belong to they all will belong to the same uh, or uh, the similar parents they are from monophyletic group or monophyletic lineage so because the component species of the genus are they are evolved from common ancestors so that's the thing so this uh, the word uh, monophyletic un uh, unit mean that uh, All the organisms inside a, a genus are uh, from common ancestors, are evolved or came from common ancestors, evolved from common ancestors. Uh, they are different. Uh, now, a question arises uh, if uh, all the organisms inside a genus are from monophyletic or from the common ancestor, then why they are different or the, why there are variations? So, the variations is, are because of the Uh, entering into different niches 
uh, in the environment uh, and, it, and then it depend on the environmental condition and according to that environment the species the different species which are coming from the common ancestor they will evolve into different species because of the environmental pressure uh, and this is actually called adaptive radiability mean if you uh, like introduced uh, uh, the same species into different niches so with the passage of time with the, uh, with the passage of time each and every group which is living in a unique on a different niches they will they will evolve their own unique characteristics and when hundreds of years are passed uh, you will observe that they are now adopted to their own zone so the the species which were from common ancestor but you introduced them into different environmental conditions they evolved according to they adopted according to the different condition so one different one species uh, that was like uh, adopted to different environmental conditions and this is no no known as adaptive readability mean they adopted into different zones and this adaptation leads to different characteristics uh, we will take a proper example um, uh, in the uh, coming slides so the component species of a genus are separated from other generic taxa by a decided gap mean there is a gap between two genera and that uh, gap between two genera will be decided by the number of species inside a uh, genus so for example if there are uh, like five or six genera so based on characteristics this gap is not like great gap it is uh, a gap which is based on similarity of characteristics and differences of characteristics if there are two genera a and b if the difference of characteristics between a and b is more so the gap is wider one and if the characters are similar so the more similar characteristics the more lesser the gap between two genera are now <clears throat> this gap the similarity or differences of characteristics depends upon the number of species mean taxa generic taxa inside that uh, genus so the size of uh, the size of the gap between two genera is inversely proportional to the size of the genus if the size of the genus is wider one or the larger one the gap will be very low there will be very narrow gap between uh, the, the, the genera and if the the size of the genus is a smaller one so there will be a wider gap between the two genera Uh, for example, if you have a, a genus X, a genus Y, and a genus Z, so these three genera, we have genus X, Y, and Z, which belong to some family, random family. Let's suppose these three genera belong to a family FX. Okay, so now <coughs> X is further divided into two. Uh, X has further two species inside this genus. Y has further E, F, G, H mean four species inside it and now <clears throat> in the genus Z there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 I, 2, uh, N species. So the number of species inside uh, the X is a uh, minimum inside the Y is then greater than X and inside the Z is more uh, than, the, uh, this, than the, these uh, two X and Y genus. So it means the genus Z is actually a huge one, a, a big one. So because it has a too much uh, like uh, species inside it. So when this number increase, increases, the gap between this genus and this genus or the other genera as in this group uh, will become like uh, the, the, the gap will become smaller one. Why? Because when you introduce um, uh, more and more uh, species in a genus, 
uh, more and more similar characteristics are going to happen and because of those similarity in characteristics the gap between the two genera will become narrow and if there is a, like very small number like this genus is a small one it's a very small because it has just two species so when the number of these species uh, decreases the gap between the two genera increases why because the lesser the, the the lesser the species inside a genus so the different the characteristics are so when we add more and more species we are adding actually more and more characteristics so when you are adding more and more characteristics the characteristics are going to become common and common and that's why the gap between x y and z will decrease and f there are very less or small number of species inside x and y and z so the difference will be wider one and the gap between the genus will be the wider one uh, for example in this very uh, example you can see there is only uh, th there are like four genera s t u and v for example in this s genera there is only one genus that is uh, sorry only one species that is a naught and inside the t uh, gen genus there is b dash and c naught species and inside the u there is uh, like genus u have only two species which is d naught and e naught and there is only one species inside the v genus that is h naught so now the, these are very uh, small genera the number uh, the number of the species in each genus is like very uh, minimum one the genus is a smaller one that's why all of them will have many different characteristics and that's why the gap between these genera increases but if you again add more and more like uh, species inside this t and s and u and v so the gap will become narrow one and if you decrease the uh, the number of species so the wider will be the gap uh, and uh, as i told you i will also give you the example of adaptive radiation uh, so in evolutionary biology adaptive radiation is actually a process uh, what happens in which organism diversify rapidly from the single ancestral species into a multitude new forms particularly when when change in the environment make new resources available and creates new challenges or open new environmental niches and they disperse these this the, these animals which were adopted or which came from the same ancestor now like they are going into different environmental conditions and new challenges so according they will adopt themselves according to do those new challenges which will like uh, uh, change their morphological and different other characteristics and uh, they will adopt to their own environments now or you can uh, say that adaptive radiation is the uh, relatively fast evolution of many species from a single common ancestor so the thing is that from single common ancestor uh, adaptive radiation generally occurs when organism enter a new area and different uh, traits affect its survival like for example uh, an example of rotation is the development of mammals after the extension of uh, dinosaurs so when uh, dinosaurs uh, they extra they become extinct then um, like from the tarsiers and from uh, uh, the other uh, from i think from the two groups of mammals uh, the, the rest of the mammals they uh, like evolved from only two groups uh, these were i think uh, tarsiers and uh, lorises or tarsiers maybe uh, if, if i am not wrong uh, uh, so here is a picture of the galapagos finches uh, or uh, you can say darwin finches uh, a very simple seed eater birds the, these were the common ancestors these seed eating birds like with this type of beak were the common ancestors but when these uh, finches were introduced into different niches so those which were introduced into like uh, where fruits and birds were available they, they, their beak became like this and they adopted according to their own environment and then they become bird and fruit eaters so uh, the others who were uh, adopt uh, were introduced into environment where grubs were available in uh, good quantity so they developed their beak for like uh, grubs eating or like making holes into the or dig holes into the 
wood and uh, like uh, and eat grubs so they say their beaks were adopted according to their own niche and their tool using finches so these uh, their beaks were adopted according to the use of their beak and sect eaters so those who were like in the insect eating zones they their beak become like this one and uh, like they, they, they become insect eaters and those who were like uh, leaves eater so their beaks and their, their, their morphology became like this one so from the single ancestor different the, the different uh, like uh, adaptation radiated and this is actually known as adopted radiations because from the single ancestors from the common ancestor different types of like birds were radiated now generic characteristics so uh, the two figures in this regards are very important one is Linnaeus and other is Darwin according to the Linnaeus uh, it is genus that give rise to the characters uh, and not the characters that make genus so it's very wrong uh, because um, uh, this is not a genus which gives the characteristics characteristics give or it makes the genus characteristic will combine and on basis of characteristics we can construct a genus not genus cannot construct characters La rather characteristics max a genus so this was actually a wrong idea which was discarded uh, the second statement of Linnaeus was that the recognition of a higher taxon depend on the correlation of common features of component species and according to the second statement of Linnaeus that uh, when we correlate the common features of component species uh, uh, on the basis of that we like uh, recognize a higher taxon for example if uh, 5 or 10 or 7 species uh, have some common characteristic common features so we consider them or we keep them uh, in a in a taxon in a higher taxon which is uh, which is a genus which is immediately after uh, like species so 5 or 7 species which have common features we construct uh, for these five or seven species a single taxon normally genus and we put all those into a single genus then similar genera are like uh, correlated and similar genera are grouped into another high taxon family and, and, and similar families are like uh, 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 correlated and similar uh, families are kept together and they uh, in a higher taxon is constructed like uh, order and we kept those families in order and then so on and so on to the domain level uh, according to Darwin so the importance of a classificatory uh, characters mainly depends on being correlated with several other characters which may be minute and inconspicuous so in, in construction of the like the, this uh, uh, hierarchy or like making these tags are what actually happens uh, uh, like we depends on characteristics we correlate several characteristics and sometimes those characteristics may be very minute and conspicuous which are not very clearly visible not very clear but we will also like depends on those small minute and inconspicuous characteristics for the classificatory purpose meaning of the genus so genus uh, is a monophyletic or phylogenetic unit because the component species of a genus are evolved from the common ancestor. So it's a phylogenetic or monophyletic unit because as we discussed uh, in the start of this lecture that genus all the species inside uh, the genus they are from common ancestors. It is also true that the genus is an ecological unit because uh, uh, most of the, the time uh, all those species which belong to uh, the, 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 same, uh, the same genus they like uh, occupy uh, an ecological unit an ecological place and it makes them an ecological unit because the component species of the genus occupy a specific environment eh, and adopt it to certain specific mode of life and that's why they are ecological but similarly genus has its own niche and uh, genus niche is broader than species specific niche now species uh, uh, niche is very uh, like uh, restricted one very specific one 
but uh, when different species uh, like they belong to uh, one single genus but their genus will have a broader niche than the the component species of that uh, like uh, uh, genus Uh, the component species of a genus has genetic identity as compared to other genera. So, sometimes hybrids are produced uh, like mule. So, now as we discussed this in the previous slide that uh, the component species inside a single genus are uh, like genetic unit. They have genetic identity. M mean uh, they are from common ancestors. So, many of their genes are similar like for example we have example of equus cabellus and equus acinus now equus is a genus and cabellus uh, equus cabellus is a horse and equus acinus is donkey now one belong to species acinus one belong to species cabellus but both of them they belong to gen, uh, genus cabellus uh, sorry equus so now Equus uh, genus has two species, Cabellus and Acinus, and the Acinus and Cabellus, both of them, they like descended from common ancestor. That's why they have genetic identity. And sometime they mate and they will produce like unfertile uh, uh, individuals, which are known as like hybrids. And uh, uh, in, this, in this regard, you can take an example of the mute, which is a hybrid. So they are unfertile, very simply, yes, they are unfertile. So it happens, uh, sometimes it happens, these hybrids are produced between the uh, component species of a genus. So this statement, uh, this statement is given by Dobius. That's all. This, this was given by Dobius in 1982. While studying a genus and its characters, we can get information about about adaptive variation and their way of divergence from one another. These are the references, and uh, thank you so much. Or watching and listening if you have, uh, if you have any question please ask